On Friday, don't forget to switch on to... <laughs> The Satellite Show is at 4.30 on Friday on Children's BBC. Or on Fur Day, as it actually says on this script here. It's actually been badly typed. Brother Beyond, a special live guest on Blue Peter this afternoon in about seven minutes after News Round, which is presented today by Helen. The San Francisco earthquake clearing up after the disaster. Again, rescue operations are still going on in the earthquake hit American state of California. Half the huge city of San Francisco has no electricity and thousands of people there are living in temporary shelters because their homes have been destroyed. Millions of pounds worth of damage was done when the quake struck early yesterday centered on Santa Cruz. Almost 300 people are known to have died and 1,500 have been injured. Most were in San Francisco where a double-decker motorway collapsed. Newsround's Terry Badu reports. Most of San Francisco's skyscrapers are still standing. They were specially built to survive earthquakes. But older buildings suffered badly. People collected what they could before leaving their badly damaged homes. Trained dogs have been searching the rubble for anyone left alive. But rescuers face problems from smaller tremors which have followed the first shock. These have made searching damaged buildings a very dangerous job. This was a four-story building. There's only two stories above the ground now. How are you going to get at them? And uh, we can't risk sending a crew in if this is going to topple over. Hope has now been given up of finding anyone still alive in the wreckage of the two-story motorway brought down by the earthquake. Giant cranes have been brought in to help remove thousands of tons of concrete. But it's difficult to reach the top of the wreckage where at least 250 people died. Helicopters are being used to fly in special tractors, which will be used to clear what was once the city's busiest road. Investigations will then start into why it collapsed. The town of Santa Cruz, where the earthquake was centred, escaped relatively lightly. It's a popular tourist centre, and damage was limited to the shopping area of the town. Several buildings collapsed there, killing six people. Roads in and out of the town are still blocked, and rescuers fear several cars and their passengers may have been buried under tons of earth. Meanwhile, in China, at least 18 people have died in another earthquake. It struck early today in the Daytong area. It's reported that 8,000 homes have been destroyed. Four people sentenced to life in prison 14 years ago were today told they were innocent by a judge at the Old Bailey. Known as the Guildford Four, Gerald Conlon, Patrick Armstrong, Carol Richardson and Paul Hill have been found guilty in 1974 of IRA pub bombings in Guildford and Woolwich. Then terrorist bombs killed seven people and injured 89. At first the four confessed to the terrible crime, but later they said they were innocent claiming they were forced into making their confessions. It was just after three o'clock that Gerald Conlon became the first of the four to taste freedom after over 14 years in jail. For his family, it was an overwhelming moment. Along with relatives of the others, they'd campaigned constantly to get the Guildford Four released. Today, the judge explained that new information had come in, and although this evidence was known to police in 1974, they didn't tell the court at the time. Now the police involved may themselves face trial. Speaking in Parliament, the Home Secretary, Douglas Hurd, said the four could apply to him for money to help make up for the 14 years they've lost, and the Deputy Prime Minister, Sir Geoffrey Howe, said the case proved that Britain should never return to capital punishment, as the Guildford Four would almost certainly have been hanged. Just two weeks after thousands of East Germans left for a new life in West Germany, the leader of East Germany has been replaced. It follows a recent protest by more than 100,000 people calling for greater democracy, the freedom to say what they think and the right to vote for people they want to rule their country. 
Eric Honecker had run East Germany for almost 20 years. He was 77 and refused to change his ways. He'd come under more and more pressure to make changes in the country so that the people would not want to leave their homeland. Even those working with him felt he'd lost touch with the masses. Now Honecker has gone, Egon Krentz, who's 25 years younger, has taken over. He's the youngest member of the ruling party and was the country's police chief. Krenz has said the country will change direction under his rule. But, like Honecker, he's a tough man, and he's already warned that huge street protests such as this one will have to stop. The crew of the American shuttle Atlantis are beginning their first full working day in space after the successful blast-off yesterday from Cape Canaveral in Florida. The launch of Atlantis had been delayed for a day because of bad weather, and it was only at the last minute that scientists at the Kennedy Space Center gave it the go-ahead. We have ignition and liftoff of Atlantis and the Galileo... Space on board was the space probe Galileo, which was launched on an historic journey into outer space just a few hours after liftoff. Galileo is on a mission to discover more about the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. The two and a half billion mile voyage is expected to take about six years. And finally, there's an old saying that from little acorns, great oaks do grow. And that's certainly what dozens of children in Gloucestershire are hoping. They're collecting thousands of acorns from the Forest of Dean, which should grow into oak trees in many parts of Britain. It's a bumper year for acorns. Last winter was mild, the summer was long and hot, so the Forest of Dean is having its best crop of acorns for four years. The Forestry Commission has decided not to waste them and wants them collected up so they can grow into young oak trees called saplings. These will then be planted all over Britain, especially in the south of England, where many oaks were destroyed in a hurricane two years ago. The Commission has invited local people, including schoolchildren and groups like brownies and cubs, to help in the collection. It's good um, being out of school because you don't have to do all the maths and comprehension and things. I would rather go out and pick acorns and do that. And the children will earn 70 pence for every kilo they collect, but the main reward is helping to replant Britain's lost oaks. OK, I won't do a corny joke. Oh, sorry. Instead, here's some special news. Tomorrow, Newsround will be coming live from the Motor Fair at London's Earl's Court. So if you're going to the show, it's a chance to see the programme going out as it happens. If you can't go, don't worry. You will, of course, see us on your telly at the usual time. Till then, bye-bye. <laughs>